Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by CES MMA featherweight Matt Bassett. Matt, how are you? I'm good, Mike. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, get some of my stuff out there. Appreciate it. Sure, no problem. Thanks for doing it. I really appreciate it. Now, Matt, I thought before we started talking about your fight, we'd change it up a little bit and get away from some of the boring questions. I know you're a very big comic book fan and a very big fan of comic book characters. I've been stalking you on social media, and I've been able to pick up that little bit of information. So I thought we'd change it up and play a little game that we usually play. I know it's not a game, but I don't really have a better term for it, but it's just comic book MMA fights with 32 comic book heroes. So 16 total fights, and you just pick the method they win by and who wins. Are you interested in playing? Yeah, let's do it. All right, all right, here we go. First up, first match, Beast from X-Men versus Lobo from Superman. So they can't use their superpower unless they're like uh, flexibility or strength. or You can't, so Wolverine, he can't use the claws. Right, he's not in there because, you know, one of his main tools is his claws. We, we've tried to eliminate those guys, and some of the people who have, like, hammers and stuff like that, they can't bring that in, but if they have, like, the ability to read minds, they can use that. If they have the ability to heal, they can use that. Stuff like that you could use in MMA if, if it was possible. Uh, I get it. Um, you know, I've always been a big, uh, big X-Men fan anyway. Um, so his... His agility um, and his, his, his overall grappling ability is off the chain. Um, I'd have to go with him, but that's a, that's a good fight. I, I don't think they're in the same weight division, are they? <laughs> no, no, no. A lot of these are open are they, weight. Are you doing weight division? As no, well? o- open weight. Yeah. Open weight. <laughs> okay. So this is like UFC 1. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Next up, Electra from Daredevil versus Black Canary from Green Arrow. Next up, Sandman from Spider-Man versus Clayface from Batman. Uh, and Sandman can't turn into sand and Yep. He can do he can do that. Oh, uh, alright, well. Then I would say um because he'd be able to teleport around the ring, kinda of moving uh, behind his opponent. Um pretty quickly. I would totally take him. Okay. Next up, Supergirl versus She Hulk. I'm big fan of superhero um, of uh, Superman and Superwoman, Superwoman anyway. Um, and you know, she hopes to be obviously. She's a Hulk, obviously. Mm-hmm. But um, I I'll, I'll probably go with uh, Superwoman by, by by choke because anything else she hopes would probably mess a lot of. Um, she wouldn't be she wouldn't be tapping the strike for and be finished. Okay. Next up, Carnage from Spider-Man versus General Zod from Superman. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Um, uh, a little Carnage by TKO mm. in, a, in a brawl in a fight, down finish. Next up, Mr. Fantastic from Fantastic Four versus DC's Plastic Man. Plastic Man. Um, I'll go... Mr. Fantastic by triangle choke and heel hook at the same time. <laughs> right, right. That that would be a great grappling match. Maybe Metamorris can put that on. <laughs> Next up, Iron Man versus Steel from Superman. All right. Can they bring in their suits? Yep, they're wearing their suits. They just can't have any of the weapons, but they can they can shoot any weapons. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, then I think it'd probably be. Uh, like it's just a regular MMA fight, right? Right. It just depends on whose power level goes down sooner. But I'll go with uh, my man Iron Man on this one. Okay. A decision. Because nobody's going to be finished. Uh, there's no choking. There's no arm barring because they can't really feel it because they're in a suit. So. Next up, Damian Wayne Robin from Batman versus Bucky from Captain America. Uh... Uh, for this one, I would probably go with Bucky, only because I've read more Captain America, and <laughs> and I like uh, 
I like that whole series anyway in comics and uh, and um, in videos I've watched. So, so we'll so we'll go with that one by decision in a in a boring fight. Okay, I like it. I like it. I was thinking you would go towards Damian Wayne because his mom is an assassin and his dad is Batman. But I like I, I like it, your. I Okay, I like it. I like it. Sometimes you got to do that. Yeah, I'll see that. Next up, Bane from Batman versus Venom from Spider Man. I don't know if I could put that. That's like a fight of the year candidate. That's a that's a fucking that's a good one, man. Um, ah, I'm trying to think. Can they use it? They can't use it. All right. Um, I think Bane. Okay. Next up, Kingpin from Daredevil versus The Blob from X Men. I hated The Blob so much. Even though I was a kid, I would go Kingpin. I hated The Blob. <laughs> Next up, Solomon Grundy from Batman versus Juggernaut from X Men. Well, I've always been a huge Juggernaut fan, um, even in uh, the comic book days um, and the, the cartoon days. So I would go with him. Um, that'd probably be a better decision. You can't, like, these guys won't be finished. You're not going to choke these guys. It's huge. You know right. what I mean? You're not going to, you're not going to make these guys fat. Probably just a decision. Um, that's another good play. Two rounder. Two rounds to one. Yeah, you know what? Next up, Dark Side from Superman versus The Thing from Fantastic Four. Mm. I'll stick with my dude, The Thing. Okay, sticking with I Marvel. Round and pound. Okay. Next up, our co-main event: The Flash versus Nightcrawler from X Men. <laughs> I was laughing because you said co-main event. Uh, <laughs> what were they? The Flash and who? The Flash versus Nightcrawler from X Men. Oh man, this is another one where I really like The Flash, but I've always I was always a huge X Men fan growing up. Um, I'm trying to avoid being favorited. Picking favorites. Uh, yeah, I'm picking another favorite. I'm picking Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler by, I don't know, man. We can use his speed. We can flash and use his speed, right? Yes. Yep, he can but use his speed. Nightcrawler can't use his, his teleportation. Oh, yeah, he can do that. It, like, let's say he's got his back. He can, the flash is ready to choke him. He can get out of there and be on the other side of the cage. Right. Like, and he that can do all the, that. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Like, if, uh, if we're tied up at all, yeah. Nightcrawler can just kind of teleport behind his back, take his back. I think we're going to make a choke for Nightcrawler. Okay, I like it. I like it. These are like really thinking. I forgot that I was in a phone movie right now. I was like, (laughs) (laughs) "Oh my god, who would win this fight?" (laughs) These are great. You're coming up with some some great predictions. So I like them. I like them. I'm enjoying this a lot. Now our main event, and I know you're giggling over there, but our main event: Doomsday from Superman versus the Hulk. I take it you're more of a Marvel fan than a DC fan, or am I off? Um, I'm both. I'm definitely both, but I've always uh, always favorited Marvel. Maybe because they're uh, they're more on TV growing up too. You know, you see it on TV and then you get the comic book. You know, who's your favorite superhero? Um, I don't know if I have one in particular. Um, I love Hulk. I probably go with either Hulk. Uh, Wolverine. Um, I like Juggernaut too. I like Batman. You know all the all the, the main ones that like a lot of people like. There's a reason why they're popular. You know they're great. 
What's your favorite piece of media to see these characters in? Is it the movies, the TV shows, the animated movies, the animated TV shows? Is it the comic books, the graphic novels, the video games? What's your favorite one? Uh, I like comics because I like being able to kind of be in the moment there. But I also I like I like how um, they're depicted in cartoons and I like how they're depicted in movies. So uh, anything that has to do with superheroes is pretty cool for me. I think that's probably a, a common answer for most uh, adults that were are still children. <laughs> <laughs> are you watching the TV shows that are out now? Arrow, Flash, Gotham. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., do you watch any of those shows? Uh, I don't have television. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I just train, dude. I just train, and if, uh, if I have some time, I'll you know, maybe watch a movie on Netflix or something like that. But for the most part, I'm training, and I'm, I'm watching YouTube videos on how to get better and hanging out with my family and this and that. Mm. Okay, good deal, good deal. Now, comic book heroes aside, let's get down to business here. June 12th, CES MMA 29. You're going to be fighting on that card live on Access TV. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, I mean, it's always good. It's always getting better and better. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's a sound as cliche as it's human, humanly possible right now. Um, I'm, I'm the best I've ever been. I'm the smartest I've ever been. Um, I'm the you know, fastest, strongest, whatever I've ever been. So, um you know, I'm gonna go out there uh, looking to finish comma, and uh, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna be happy at all with the decision. So I'm gonna go out there and hunt for. I'm gonna find his weakness. I'm gonna hunt for it. I'm gonna attack it, and I'm gonna. How are you feeling right now? Obviously, it's been a very long process. You've had some opponents change. You've had. A, a long training camp because this fight, it feels like it's been announced forever ago that they said that you were going to be fighting on this card. So at this stage of the training camp, how are you feeling? Are you feeling like, hey, let's just get the fight over with? Let's let's get it here. I, I'm ready to go right now. Are you feeling that you, you hope that your opponent doesn't get injured again and they have to pair you up with someone else? How, how are you feeling right now at this stage of your training camp? I've been ready for about eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how I am. Man. I, I'm always training. Always, always. If uh, Bellator or UFC called me, um, I'd be ready on you know two weeks' notice. I, I just have to drop the weight. You know, diet is diet's a big thing. Uh, obviously, cutting the weight is, is a big deal. But um, cardio wise, mentally, I'm I'm always ready to fight. How many opponent changes have you had? I know of two for sure. Two guys who, for whatever reason, can't fight on June twelfth. I know this guy stepped up that you're going to be fighting on June twelfth. But has there been more names thrown your way that haven't been able to fight? No, it was just uh, Rosario, I guess, he got hurt, and then uh, Lenny Wheeler. Um, we matched up with them for a little bit, and actually, I have no idea what happened there. And then, um, and then we're like, hey, we got such and such names for you, or who do you want? Or it's like, and they're like, uh, commas, are we kept in the fight? I was like, okay, let's fight him. How long has this training camp been for you? Because it seems like forever ago it was announced that you'd be fighting on this date. You didn't have an opponent originally when I heard that you were going to be fighting, but it seems like forever I've known about this event. So when exactly did you get the offer for this fight, and how long has this camp been for you? Um, I've known that I was going to fight this summer for CES for a few months. Um, probably, actually, you know, a few months even before... I knew about a possible opponent. Um, CES has been talking to me for a couple of years. Uh, but as far as being on this card and preparing for this fight itself, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm always preparing. I don't even use the word training camp ever. Uh, ever, ever, ever. I think uh, if you're... Um, there's there's no seasons. You know, there's no there's no camps. I'm not a guy who, who goes and, and trains three days a week and then finally out of a fight and picks it up to four or five, six days a week, whatever. I'm always training six days a week, uh, two, three times a day. And, um, and that's my life. So, uh, like I said, I'm always in shape, and you know, I'm always ready to fight anybody. Are you still training out of underdog BJJ? Yep, in Hartford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I know for a while there you were bouncing around to different gyms. Do you still do that? Are you still doing a lot of cross-training? 
I do. Um, not recently, for the past couple fights, I've been more, rather than, you know, I, I did a lot of cross training to get so comfortable in the uncomfortable situations uh, to the point where, you know, that those first two minutes where you're looking at your opponent and you're like, uh, what can I do against this guy? Am I going to be able to do it? Blah, blah, blah. Those don't happen for me anymore. Whether it's in training or in a fight, that doesn't happen. I just go out there and think of myself and what I'm able to do, and I do it. Um, and it's because I've got so comfortable in those uncomfortable situations, constantly cross-training, constantly seeing new people in front of me all the time. Um, so I don't need to cross-train and sparring nearly as much anymore. Um, but I do train at Fighting Arts Academy in Springfield, Mass., um, with Nick Newell, Leon Davis, Justin Torrey, and so on. And uh, I've, I've been there for maybe five years. Mm. Uh, I, I use them to help help me get ready for fights. And I'm at Underdog BJJ and, um, and Soul Fighters, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and, and Clown Milk mm. at at uh, Jiu-Jitsu and Stone Academy. Have you been doing any training with Nate Pagan? Can you know Nate? Yeah. Well... I never actually met him. I know of him, but I've never met him in person, never talked to the guy. But I know him because Nate and my brother played football together at Central Connecticut State. That's how I know of Nate. Right on. Yeah, Nate does, uh, he does jiu-jitsu at Underdog, and um, he's, a, he's a freak, man. He's a freak athletic, super, super ridiculously strong. Some of the weights that he puts up are, like, two, three times as much as I can do. And he's, I don't know, like maybe 20 pounds more than me. That's, that's it. Mm-hmm. It's insane. He's super strong. Yeah, great athlete. Great. A- Is he going to get into MMA? Do you know? Um, he's mentioned it. He's talked about it. But he always um, he always says, but yet he has so many different goals that he wants to do or even you know try that you know, there's stuff that's put on the back burner at times. But uh, if he does, man, just, be afraid. <laughs> whatever weight he decides to fight, like 170, maybe do some catch weights at like 165 or whatever, and then down to 55 eventually. But um, yeah, he's a freak man. Now he's just lifting. Hmm. He's coaching. Um, he's coaching at Trinity College. He's a strength and conditioning coach there, one that has the many. Um, and he's also he's an instructor at uh, CrossFit Hartford, in, in which is attached to Underdog Jiu Jitsu. At 221 Newfield Avenue in Hartford, and, uh, and he's just training all the time. Mm. Okay, okay. I was just curious to know what he was up to. Now, um, in the past, Matt, when you've gone into fights, you've just gone in there kind of like how GSP or Anderson Silva goes into their fights. They really don't have a game plan, and they really don't care what their opponent is going to do. They're 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 cautious, and and they, and they acknowledge what their opponents are, are good at or and what their weaknesses are, but really they just stick to the, the same game plan. GSP, whether he's fighting Dan Hardy, a guy who's, who's known as a striker, or Josh Koscheck, a guy who's known as a great wrestler, he's still going to wrestle. Anderson Silva is going to do the same thing regardless of who he's fighting. Is that still the same mindset you bring into the cage? You're aware of what your opponent brings to the table, but you really just only worry about what you're going to do. Yeah, that's, that's all you can do. You can't. There's no way to predict what's going to happen in a fight. I mean, you could, you can, you can predict it, but like you're like, oh my god, um, um, it's like flipping a, a fifty-sided coin. You know, you might get lucky predicting the outcome, but probably not. You know, um, so I, I go in there, and you know, I, you look at all my fights; they're pretty much the same. I go in there and I try to hurt you standing. And, you know, if it clinches up, it clinches up, and I feel you from there. If I could take you down, maybe I'll take you down. But for the most part, I'm going to try to hurt you standing, keep it standing. I, I like it there a lot. Um, as far as, like, GSP and Anderson go, uh, those guys are just so, so good at their one thing that you know what's coming and you just you can't stop it, you know. Striking of Anderson Silva or the wrestling of GSP uh, with his ground and pound. You, like, you can't stop those things, so... You know what they're going to do, and you can't stop it. And hopefully, I get to that point somehow. You like, you know what I'm going to do, but you just you can't stop it. Lenny Wheeler, Lazar, and Kamal Worthy of those three guys that they paired you up with. Who was the best matchup for you? Best matchup? I don't know. I don't care. I was going to beat them all. So. Right. Right. Uh, 
Lenny was going to come at me with his chin out, and I was going to punch him in the face. Uh, Lozado would probably um, give me a good brawl. Uh, I, I, that one looked really fun. I was excited about that one. And Kama um, uh, is a really, really good striker. So maybe I, uh, maybe Kama. Maybe Kama, because he's accurate. He likes to strike. Um, he'll probably make for a really entertaining striking fight. Do you watch a lot of film when you prepare for your fights, or do you leave that up to your coaches and they tell you what to do? Um, no, I I pretty much watch a lot of film and and then talk to my coaches about about it after, and then figure out my own game plan. Um, and then you know my coaches watch, and then we're kind of like, hey, what do you think? And then they're like, and then he'll tell me what he thinks, I tell him what I think, and then it's like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> I read a quote from you a while back. It was on the CES MMA Twitter account. The quote was, I'm going to go in there and be so confident that it's borderline cocky. I'm just curious, what exactly does that mean? Here's the thing. It doesn't matter um, who you're fighting. It doesn't matter who you're fighting. And like, I hope Kyle is listening to this, too. Cause I, I hope he hears this and gets into his head. Um, because I want a confident dude in front of me right now. You know, I want, I want to fight confident dudes. I want all the best comma in front of me. It doesn't matter who you're fighting. You know, think about what you're doing, and that's it. It doesn't matter what this other dude can do or what he is doing. You got to think about what you're doing, and if you're able to uh, go out there and perform to the best of your ability, no matter what, you've won. You know, if you come out with a, a loss, you're not going to go on the back and be like, I should have done this, I should have done that. I was stupid. I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't fire off. I wanted to throw that one too, but I couldn't for some reason. You know, like, I hesitated. You know, you never question yourself. So, uh, if you go out there, um, like I said, so confident that it's almost cocky, then you should be able to just be in the moment and be yourself in the fight. And that's the ultimate goal. Now, your opponent, Kamal Worthy, what are your thoughts about him? How, how much do you know about him? What do you think this matchup looks like when it takes place on the 12th? I think it's pretty obvious. I think he's a striker. Um, I mean, you could see his transitions on the ground and in wrestling. And um, I, I don't know if he wrestled. He may have. Um, but it doesn't, he doesn't look like a, you know, a phenomenal wrestler by any means. Um, so it looks like he has a, a good clinch. And he looks like he's real accurate. Um, and he finds his jaw, which is cool. Um, and he's probably going to be hunting for mine, which is okay. <laughs> you know, more power to him. So... Uh, should be a good fight. He's, he's a striker. I'm a striker. And I, and I got a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm a good wrestler. I got a brown belt in judo. So, uh, it'll be fun. Just curious, are you still under contract with Bellator? No. Yeah. Are you open to going back there? I know you just said UFC a couple minutes ago. Would you be open to fighting for Bellator again, or do you have different goals now? Yeah, I, I, I am open to fighting for them. Um, I have a contract with CES that allows me to um, fight in Bellator or UFC if they call. So, uh, but other than that, I can't fight anywhere else. Hmm. People consider your three biggest wins slash three best performances to be against Diego Nunez, Nick Pledmont, and John Benoit. In no order, a lot of people say your three best performances and your three best wins, your three biggest wins, are against those guys. So, I'm just curious, do you agree with that list? Are those your three biggest wins, or are there other wins that you've had that should be on this list ahead of some of the guys who are on it? Um, biggest wins. I mean, they're all, all, all my wins are huge at the, at the time, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, when I fought a guy named Anthony Caponis, um, he was probably like 15 pounds heavier than me in the cage. This was at 155. He was probably 15 pounds heavier than me at the cage. In the cage. I never wrestled before that, like ever. I mean, in real wrestling. And he was a state champion wrestler. Big, huge dude, strong, explosive. Uh, so that was a, that was a big win for me at the time. Um, but the map to set at that moment would get smashed by the Diego Nunez of maybe that time or, or this time. Uh, so I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is that they're all, they're all great feelings. They're all huge wins. Um, but for me to look at it on the timeline, I think uh, I think Diego was probably the best, was the biggest uh, underdog on paper. So you know, I, I'd probably go um, Diego, jumping away, and then uh, I don't know about Piedmont. 
took two months tough, but I was pretty confident I was going to win that fight. Hmm. Okay. Maybe Anthony. Maybe Caponis. Okay. Okay. Just curious, how did you get your nickname, The Mangler? Um, you know, Kip Kohler is He's the owner of Naga. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before I went to, before I joined up with a, an MMA school, I trained in his basement. And we just kind of like, you know, just trained around. <laughs> it's like once a week or twice a week. And pretty much we just grappled. That's, that's it. And then very randomly we respond. It was like very, like very randomly once every couple months. <laughs> So there was like four fights or something, three fights maybe, I don't know. But I never sparred. Uh, didn't really do any striking whatsoever. Um, but we were downstairs in his basement and we were just, you know, it's pretty fun our first fight. And they're like, hey, so Matt, what do you want for anything? I'm like, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. And uh, I don't remember who said it, but somebody was like, I love the manga. And I was like, well, some of us were like, oh yeah, that was pretty cool. And, you know, I started laughing and I, uh, I was like, you know what? This kid at, I went to college with, he said, um, he came up to me one day, we were uh, passing each other in the common area, and he said, hey, what's up, the Mangler, what's up, Matty Mangler? I'm like, what? He goes, that'd be your fighter nickname if you ever fought. And that was like three years before I even, you know, before I even started fighting. So it was just kind of like meant to be, I guess. Now, Matt, last question before I let you go. Is there anything you're looking to prove, and is there anything you're looking to showcase on June 12th? Uh, I'm just looking to continue what I did in my last fight. I mean, um... I had one more round to prove my savagery, and it got stopped in the second. I wanted more. I wanted five more minutes. So uh, I'm continuing that into the first round of my next fight. Matt, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Yeah, uh, to my fans, first and foremost, thank you for always being there for me, being there with me. There's always uh, a huge army that comes with me wherever I go. Um, So I love you guys. I really appreciate the support. Um, as far as sponsors, you can check out a list of them, because uh, there's a ton of them. You can check out a list of them on www.matpassette.net and you click on sponsors, and there will be uh, a whole list of them there. And you can click the link, follow them. Um, so, you know, like I said, follow me on, uh, on Twitter um, at MangoBJJ or Instagram at uh, MattyMatWip. Matt, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it. Good luck. June 12th at CES MMA 29 against Kama Worthy. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, man. Have a good day.